welcome to Talila Lagash. Um, today's video, this is the second one that I've done today and they're interrelated. Um, the first one I did was on dream characters and now I'm going to do one on the dream ego or the self in dreams. Um, I've got a drink here so excuse me. My throat's been getting a bit dry from doing multiple recordings of the first video to get it right. Um, so the dream ego or the dream self, so how yourself is projected to you in your dream or how you experience yourself as um, the dream character version of you. So I'm going to give you some examples as well of how I have had some unusual encounters with my dream self and show you ways that you might be able to use your dream self to become lucid in your dreams. So with the dream characters, I mentioned that you can look to see elements of um, difference in them from how you would expect that person in real life, or strange or bizarre um, traits or characteristics of dream characters which might appear as a dream sign and trigger you to do a reality check and hopefully become lucid. There's ways that you can use your dream self or your dream ego to do the same thing. And that basically means training yourself to recognise things that happen in your dream to you or um, are parts of you and your identity in the dream which are very different from how you are in real life which should alert you to the fact that you're actually dreaming. And then if you are um, in the habit of doing reality checks to question your level of consciousness then you can um, hopefully become lucid. The problem is, of course, sometimes I question things about myself in my dreams, but I don't actually then go on and do a reality check. And I'll give you some examples of that as well. Um, so basically, when you look at yourself in your dream, and I mean really look at yourself, so go up to a mirror or see your reflection, or sometimes, which is quite common in my dreams, see myself in the third person, so as if I'm another um, version of myself looking at a projection of me in 3D in front of me, whether it be like watching the character do stuff as if it's in a movie or whether it be um, sometimes I see a holographic image of myself um, which I see in front of me projecting. I'll go on to explain a bit more about that in a moment. but. Um, you might purposefully try and look in a mirror, train yourself to do that as part of your reality check. So actually it might be quite common for you when you're in a dream to go up to a mirror and go and look at yourself. With me, I sometimes do see myself in the mirror. Um, I often see myself, like I say, in the third person, almost like I'm watching a movie of myself or seeing myself as a hologram or as if I'm just some kind of omnipian, omnipian omniscient sorry omniscient all seeing eye looking down on the action seeing myself in the dream sometimes I recognize that I'm seeing myself in third person sometimes I just accept it as if it's just one of those weird dream concepts which should be a dream sign but we don't always use it as such so when I look at myself in the dream I'm often very different and this is why it's a great reality check because if you see yourself in the mirror or you see yourself in the third person and you notice that there's something really really weird or different or unexpected about your appearance this can be the point at which you do a reality check so for example you might see yourself as a different gender you might see yourself as a different ethnicity now I often see myself as a um, person of colour I'm mixed race myself but I see myself with a much darker skin tone I often see myself with blonde hair. Um, I often see myself with a really, really curvaceous body. I mean, I'm quite curvy as it is. I don't think you can see much. But, um, so that's the sound of the little stand I use for my um, camera um, scraping. I haven't got a very professional setup here. Um, but often in my dreams, I'm much darker skin tone. I'm much curvier. <clears throat> I've had a body like Kim Kardashian for um, really things that should scream out 
um, dream sign, do a reality check. Um, some people have seen themselves much thinner, much fatter. Um, these can be great ways of recognising that we're in a dream because something isn't quite right. Now, in my dreams, I have quite a lot of focus on my, well, my body, for one. Um, I often see myself much curv curvier. Um, sometimes even, I would say, um, I see myself quite obese in dreams. Um, my body's been very disproportionate. Other times I've seen myself exactly as I do expect to see myself, but I also have quite a lot of focus on my hair in dreams. So often my hair will be a different length, I've had it cut, I regret having it cut, I'm losing my hair and going bald, um, my hair's dyed a different colour, my hair's a different texture, and I think that's actually because my hair's part of my, quite a strong part of my identity, it doesn't look it because it's right up on top of my hair, on top of my head, but it comes right down to past my waist and I recently cut like six inches off it because I do my own hairdressing um, this is all me um, and it's just getting really long so part of my identity part of quite a lot of um, how I see myself because of the kind of compliments I get about oh you've got a big booty you've got like thick beautiful hair you know sometimes they're from really nice guys sometimes they're from fuck boys but you know maybe my identity as a female is quite strongly linked to my hair as it is for quite a lot of women and the idea of losing that part of my identity creates quite a lot of anxiety obviously I um, see myself as curvier because I see that as the body ideal not obviously obese but certainly I do a lot of squats and actually do squats in my dreams quite a lot so maybe that's the muscle memory of squats that I've been doing during the day or a bit of day residue or maybe a bit of wish fulfillment telling me to keep up with the exercise and to encourage me to do more um, I'll talk about wish fulfillment and dream self um, in a moment but um, it's an aspirational thing for me so and also because I am quite curvy anyway that's where I get a lot of compliments from so um, another strange um, experience I had the other day, I have saved two baby bunnies now on campus, we have like a lot of wild rabbits and the other day I saved the second one, it was like a newborn one and basically it was like all docile and had flies on it so I cleaned it up, cleaned all the flies off and like actually managed to pick it up and so I took it back to my house and put it in like a little container and then called the RSPCA and like basically we found out that it had half been decapitated by like some thing like some predator and like maggots had started to go into its neck so the RSPCA woman said oh yeah it saved its life whatever and DL who you often see if you read my dream um, journal that's online on my blog linked in the description box below um, he said oh yeah you're really good with animals Though I'm quite an emotionless person, I used to be quite emotional because I've suffered from bipolar disorder for um, years and years of my life. And in order to get balance and whatever, I had to self-therapise. And doing my dreams and all my dream research was part of that. And I have quite flat emotions and sometimes I seek confrontation to release a bit of emotion because... I'm at quite a balanced and healthy point in my life but I also do feel a little bit flat and I'm one of those weird people that are extrovert but spend a lot of time alone very introverted in their behaviours but extroverted in their personality so often in my dreams I find myself surrounded by people and enjoying company and things like that so that's the subconscious I guess extrovert side of me but equally I'm quite um, introverted now what comes with this is that I'm not very sensitive and I'm not very maternal and in the dream that I had the night that I saved the rabbit to cut a long story short because I know this has been going on for quite a lot of minutes now um, basically um, I had a dream where I um, this will all tie in in a perfect circle in a minute and you'll realize that I had a lot of intent going from all these tangents but um, so the night that I had the dream about the rabbit, I had a dream um, 
the night that <laughs> the night that I saved the rabbit, I had a dream in which I was with my mum and I was wearing a pink top. I see pink as representing femininity because it's the one way I express my feminine side because I have quite a lot of masculine qualities. I'm not very maternal. I'm not very good with relationships, you know, all of that. Um, I was wearing a pink top and I realised that my left boob wasn't there. And I didn't know how, like, it had gone, but it was, like, completely flat. And then I had my right one. Um, and I also had a baby now in every other dream that I've had with kids I've rejected the fact that I wanted a baby if I was having a baby in the dream I would wish that it would go away or that I could pause being pregnant and then live some more life and then choose to restore it as a state of affairs later on I've abandoned children I abandoned some children that I had with Eminem to go off and just have a perfect relationship with Eminem. I've been an awful dream mother, completely uncaring. Now, in this dream, on the night of the rabbit um, incident, um, I was shocked to find that I only had one boob, like, so my left one was gone. And um, I was thinking, how am I gonna look after this baby? How am I gonna breastfeed it? All this stuff, even though obviously it was quite possible to do it, like that bit of the logic didn't kick in. Obviously, I'm aware that if I have one I can breastfeed a baby quite well but in the dream I was like oh no what am I gonna do now I then had a holographic um, vision of myself in the third person so there we go wrapping it up round to the topic that I had started talking about so I see myself as a hologram and I look like a hologram and I recognize that I'm a hologram in the dream looking at myself as a hologram and I have both boobs again and I think that is a reflection of the way I see my femininity. Like I'm worried about losing like what I've got as a woman, the feminine qualities, because I'm aware that they're so limited. And like, do you know what I mean? Like, no, oh, how do I say it? Um, you know, in my personal life, if you've watched my channel for a long time, you'll be aware that I'm quite a masculine um, in terms of my interests. So I used to be a skateboarder. I've always been into hip hop, always been into um, like alternative music like Screamo like when I was I've been a vocalist in two Screamo bands um, was in skateboarding since like my teenage years don't do it anymore but I used to do it not particularly well but you know um, didn't even wear a skirt until I was like 20 and then I had to come to terms with the feminine side because I'm a heterosexual woman and I like men and I'm aware that men don't always want to see like a woman with like low body jeans and men's box shorts and a hoodie some of them do, yeah, great, but I want to be feminine. So I'm aware that in my dreams, quite a lot of the time, I'm at odds with my femininity. There was one dream that I had where I was watching Beyonce show something that said divorce, but there wasn't an R. Now, often in dreams, writing doesn't actually um, come across well. Text says different things, or it's absurd, or it's nonsensical, we, or we can get meaning from it, but if we looked at it with a logical mind, those words would never have meant that um so i saw that now somebody well two people have interpreted that dream for me because it came out around the time of lemonade which i had said was going to be one of my dream triggers the kind of day residue i was going to use to try and see if it popped up in my dream and people talked about lemonade in terms of beyonce and is she going to divorce jay-z has she cheated on him all of that now i often have dreams where i see beyonce um, and I've either been with Jay-Z or um, sort of with them as a couple. And the fact is, I honestly think that when I see Beyonce in a dream, it's like projecting like my ideal version of self. It's like what I wish I could be. Like so successful. She's so ambitious. She's so talented. She's so beautiful. She's like, you know, the dream person. Um, and somebody else told me, well... Um, divorce means like you could see it as a schism of self which I thought was quite an interesting interpretation and DL mentioned that it sounds like divotchka which means girls in a clockwork orange which was one of my other dream triggers and I was going to get a clockwork orange tattoo it um, graveyard girls got the same one it says um, real horror show which is like my favorite like little phrase from the film I'm not gonna get it on my wrist but I'm getting it in the font somewhere on my body when I figure out where to get it 
and so girls a schism of self projection of ideal self that's how I see you know how I relate myself to a dream character so that sort of ties in with the last video that I made when we talked about dream characters um Beyonce is a celebrity dream character I come across a lot I think it's because I project myself um my aspiration as a woman and who I wish I could be as a feminine woman onto her as a person so she appears in my dreams as symbolic of the ultimate woman in my um, subconscious so sometimes we can use um, dream characters and our interrelations with them and the plot to determine how we see ourselves. I mean I've had another dream where it was kind of an incestuous relationship with a family member and I really didn't you know that disgusts me so in the dream I projected myself as Beyonce so it was almost like I transcended my own body made myself the ultimate woman and like sex symbol so it was almost like whitewashing the experience making it safer making it more understandable removing my identity from it and projecting Beyonce like the ultimate you know beautiful woman um, you know so it was a safe act for the family member to be intimate with Beyonce, not with their family member. So I almost gave them a defense to their weird sexual fantasy, which was actually my dream, weirdly, if you can understand that. Um, but, you know, there we go. That's how Beyonce has appeared and shown me aspects of myself and my dream ego. Um, so look at yourself in the mirror and see how you look or see if you can see yourself in the third person and see how you look. Look at what's different and then try and relate it back to your everyday um, sort of side of things. So um, on that day maybe I had some kind of maternal feelings towards the baby rabbit so that came out in the dream where I felt that I was going to be an inadequate mother but I was actually more willing to have a go at it than I had been in previous dreams where I've just been absolutely terrible so another thing that we might look at in dreams is our subconscious um kind of motivation so freud talked about wish fulfillment and he said that the primary motive of our dreams is to fulfill our wishes so they could be quite violent or they could be quite sexual or they could just relate to an everyday concern that's on our mind part of the day residue which seeps into our dreams but has been sim um, made symbolic so that maybe you know we don't recognize um, exactly what our subconscious is telling us it's just doing its dream magic in a kind of censored way which is playing out um, our wishes in um, the fantasy environment of the dream so to give you an example I was living in a situation recently in this house where I was under quite a lot of tension now I really wanted to snap and the old me the one that I said was quite emotional and maybe not always thinking completely rationally but was emotionally driven would have just snapped now the situation was that I was getting constant complaints five days post factum of me doing something slightly annoying such as talking on Skype um, or running a bath but the rules of the person who was saying these things were not applicable to her and there was a massive difference in who we are as people and how we dealt with these kind of conflicts and I don't want to get into bitching but you know you can tell that I was pissed off and a lot of the time my friends would say to me I don't even know how you've managed to hold your temper because they've seen me go off on people before who've legitimately deserved it but not even as legit as this situation and I'd held my temper but it had bottled up and internalised now I had a dream, I had two dreams one where I was in like the um, Two Life Boats Hotel which is a pub that my mum used to run in Sheringham and it was a really fun place to work it's right by the seafront I've written about it extensively on my dream journal online which you can see in the description box, the link to my blog. So, one dream happened there and she interrupted me while I was serving some men 
probably relating to the idea of the Skype calls being annoying because at the time I was webcamming, I think. Oh no, I was having a conversation with my friend. But I also webcam, so I was aware that that might have been another source of um, dissatisfaction. But I was serving these men and having a laugh and then she just shouted, no! So I ran up to her and I punched her in the face. I had another dream the night she left where there was a war and unfortunately I can't remember this dream well because I think my phone went off and disturbed it but I was in a war and I was victorious now these really violent emotions that came out and the physical violence in the dream related to some form of wish fulfillment I wanted to do this in real life but I'd internalised it I came into conflict with myself and the kind of person I am which is at least not aggressive but is confrontational and direct and would rather speak rather than be ignored or given the silent treatment or just blank you know none of that is my tactic I don't like the silent treatment I'd rather just argue or just be blunt and have a conversation also you know I'm a lawyer I'm about being upfront about what my side of things is and what I expect and try and negotiate things or if not fucking um steamroller them down no that's not the way but you know what I mean um that was wish fulfillment in my dream it told me something about myself it told me you need to release this anger and therefore I was able to do that now the sexual self in a dream is also something quite interesting to look at now at the moment I'm in a celibate period of my life so I often have quite a lot of sex dreams because it's kind of releasing that sexual pent-up energy now, I've had lesbian things in dreams and I didn't enjoy it, but I didn't dislike it. That really reflects my personal um, outlook, which is the kind of self that I'm already very aware of, that I'm heterosexual, but I'm not adverse to messing around. Usually it has to be for the male gaze, for me to really be into it sexually, because I know I'm heterosexual and I'm totally comfortable with that, but, I'm, you know, it doesn't to get it on me for girls when I used to work in um, an exotic dance club obviously men would pay double to see that kind of thing so um, in my dream I don't I'm not uncomfortable with it but what I do find is that in every dream that I have when I'm in a celibate period of my life I'm constantly just in the act of giving pleasure to men and their dicks are massive like always disproportionately large with, within the dream very phallic, um, obviously phallic imagery is a phallus, but do you know what I mean, it's, it's really, it's showing, you know, I'm really um, focusing on wish fulfillment, not necessarily with the people that I enter into situations with in the dream, because some of them have been really disgusting, and some of them have been people that I haven't even seen for like 15 years and would never have thought of in that way, so it's quite you know, weird how the dream characters manifest, um, refer back to the dream character video, but the actual act is always me giving pleasure, so not taking any pleasure for myself. Sometimes if I do have um, sexual intercourse in the dreams rather than just giving the man pleasure, it's often from behind or it's in a public space and in front of their family as well. And I think this reflects my exhibitionist side. Now, that's not something that I would say is even subconscious. That's something I'm consciously aware of. I'm quite. An, people have described me as a narcissist. I'm not vain, but I'm incredibly. Um, well, people say I'm egotistical, or like I don't like these terms, but people have definitely told me that they see narcissism and even worse traits <laughs> fall on the dark triad of personality types. <laughs> but, you know, maybe I'm case hardened from law. I've been through quite a lot of shit in my life and picked myself up and got back again. Maybe I'm just a very tough person. That's why I come across as quite ruthless. But in um, the dreams that I have, I'm quite exhibitionist and I'm quite shameless. Not that there should be any shame for sex, but, you know, public sex is unlawful. And in the dreams, I do seek that out. I take great pleasure in doing it in like um, conference halls and you know all those kind of public places that appear in dreams like school halls, um, sports fields, um, 
there's been loads you can check my dream journal and read and see um which kind of scenarios i have dreamed of having public sex in in front of family members or parties of people or work colleagues um but yeah so that's the side of myself that i see in dreams and that reflects the um real me that i see in my waking life so i see sometimes that i do have violent impulses and that in the dreams i'm allowed to release that and fulfill my wish to release that in ways that maybe i can't socially and i also see the kind of sexual side of myself which does reflect albeit not always the right dream character the kind of acts that i would do in um real waking life i never have sexual experiences in terms of acts that i would never be comfortable doing i've never had that and i haven't got particularly um adventurous sides um you know so maybe my subconscious just shows me the self that i um you know consciously am aware of and doesn't go any deeper because it doesn't think that i am able to cope with that or maybe I just don't really have any kinks. So, you know, um, vanilla me, vanilla me in a dream. Albeit public sex, I guess, isn't that vanilla, but, um, you know, it's not like anything really terrible has happened. And some people have told me uh, about quite vivid dreams where the sexual self in the dream was completely different to how they perceive themselves to be consciously. Now, it's nothing to be scared of, um, you just need to question what the dream's trying to tell you as a whole. Don't focus on exactly how negative that feels, because I have very negative dreams where I'm violent towards my family members or um, such like, which I am not proud of and they don't leave me feeling very good, but it's certainly not that I actually do have violent feelings towards those people. So the sexual self in the dream doesn't necessarily reflect the fact that you want to do these things in real life. It could be that it's trying to reveal something a little bit more complex and symbolic to you. Sorry. So other ways that you can um, ask about yourself in a dream and discover some things about your subconscious self is to find a dream character and ask them about yourself. Um, this relates more to the video that I made before which I've told you about multiple times um, about dream characters. So um, if you watch that video, you'll find out how to ask a dream character questions about yourself or some people's theories about this. Um, I believe that a lot of our dream characters are projections of self. So sometimes we can detect ourselves in our dream characters, as I kind of said with the Beyonce dream. Um, sometimes I think my dream self um, goes a little bit more adventurous than my conscious self or has some kind of impact on my conscious self and changes my conscious self to meet up with what the subconscious has um, highlighted or identified. So for example, um, I said in the other video that I often have dreams where I'm Eminem's wife. Now, um, all of my successful relationships, mainly in um, my dreams, have been with kind of bad boy types. And I suppose, largely, stereotypically speaking i like road men in it i don't no i do but like not you know i don't rule them out but i just like guys that like urban lifestyle and that typically comes with a certain way of dressing certain um music interests whatever so it's not surprising that i chose eminem because i like hip-hop he dresses so dope and in my waking life, even though I hadn't found him attractive at all, my subconscious self being happily married and really fancying him in the dream actually um, changed how I felt about him in waking life. So it's interesting how sometimes our dream selves actually do start to influence our conscious awareness and our conscious perception of ourself or our choices or our behaviours. And I've had dreams where myself in the dream has been confronted with a situation symbolically similar to one that's in my waking reality and it's given me a choice of action and I've taken a particular um, path and in the dream I've enjoyed it and it's influenced how I make decisions in my waking reality so that's an interesting way that you can use your dream self to maybe influence um, aspects of your waking life as well 
but you really need to look at yourself in a dream whether it be in a mirror or try and get some kind of third party perspective on how you look in a dream how you're changed how you're um, different how you would expect to see yourself in waking reality how you relate to your dream characters what kind of behaviours you display, whether it be sexual behaviours or violent behaviours, the way you make decisions in dreams and how the consequences feel in the dream. Think about all these aspects of um, how you experience yourself in your dream. Are there any kind of characteristics which are grossly inflated in the dream? For example, do you use weapons in the dream? If you use weapons in the dream, it can be a release of violent or animalistic, aggressive tendencies. Look at who you're directing that anger towards. Is it a kind of wish fulfillment that you're able to release that anger at this person in waking reality, but you can't do that? So instead, in the safe space of the dream, you're actually allowed to act out that kind of behavior, this kind of subconscious um, or maybe semi-conscious um, emotional or um, kind of reaction to something that's going on um, in your waking reality. Um, it's all really interesting. I mean, I always say that we as human beings wear a kind of mask, which we, I mean, it's very Freudian, that we adopt because we live in civilised society and we also are insecure people and we therefore very rarely ever show our full self to the world because people's perceptions, we want to be able to influence them and we also might want to aspire to be a certain person so we emphasise the traits we do want and um, minimise the ones that we don't want. Um, I try to be as open as possible which is why I have a dream journal online, people say it's a very open way of showing how my subconscious works and how I see myself in my dreams and the kind of things that I do in my dreams. I'm a very open person. Um, so it's unsurprising to me that there's not too much that happens in my subconscious that isn't something that I'd be willing to share with people. But, you know, everyone's got a different biography, everyone's got different um, significant events in their life and their subconscious will have processed different kind of material. So that's not going to be true of everybody. Some people's subconscious will show them things that they've never thought of themselves in their waking reality. But it's all very interesting um, to find out exactly how our dreams project us back to ourselves and um, you know dreams drop the mask that we put on for living in society it shows us something that we might not otherwise appreciate about ourselves or just is a little bit difficult for us to cope with um, you know we didn't want to confront that in our waking reality but our dream is a kind of therapy so it's working through responses that you know might need a little bit of conflict resolution or wish fulfillment 